We start on the 17th of March, 1963, when Mallard was used on a rail tour in the West Country. The locomotive's drawing power was very evident, even at this date, as she waited for the tour participants to return to her train after a trip on the Hemyock branch. She set off northwards towards Taunton and the west of England main line to Westbury. The train ran into Westbury station from the south before taking the Avon Valley line through Trowbridge to Bath and Bristol. Resignalling in the 1980s has changed the scene at Westbury forever. At Bristol Temple Meads, the A4 came off the train to be serviced at Bath Road Shed. Backing onto the train once more, the A4's corridor tender is clearly seen. Mallard was fitted with this tender for most of her service life. The train left Bristol on the original Great Western Main Line, travelling east to Swindon. At Swindon, Mallard was paraded alongside another famous, and since preserved, engine, Great Western No. 6000 King George V. After reversal at Swindon, the tour ran southwards via Melksham, then a double-tracked main line.
Our final view is on the southern region, climbing to Honiton Tunnel. Mallard had visited here before during the 1948 locomotive exchanges. A month after this tour, she was withdrawn for preservation. She was restored to the condition in which she achieved the world record, but unfortunately only as a static exhibit, first at Clapham and then at York National Railway Museum. However, in 1985, she returned to steam, looking very strange. This had come about because, after great public pressure, the National Railway Museum had decided to restore her to full working order in order to celebrate, in 1988, the 50th anniversary of her world record. The first public showing was outside the NRM's building during the 1985 Open Day. After this, the engine returned to the workshop to have the streamlined fittings replaced and an immaculate museum finish applied. Scarborough Borough Council made a very large contribution to the restoration appeal, so it was appropriate that the first public run should be from York to Scarborough. In 1986, York Station was overrun with enthusiasts as Mallard returned to work. was a relatively busy year for the engine, but it had been agreed that she would only work a limited number of trains after her return to steam. She visited London for a spell of duty from Marylebone and is seen climbing Saunderton Bank on her return to the north. Our final view of this rail tour is just north of Derby. A further limited series of runs was scheduled for 1987. We visited the NRM to see her being prepared for her first major outing of the year, to Scarborough and return via the Harrogate Circle and Leeds. The trip was completely sold out and additional coaches were added to the former Great Western 150 set. The train had been organized by the Friends of the National Railway Museum, who had also organized the fundraising for restoration. Here from the castle grounds in Maresborough, we see 4468 crossing the River Ned on the Harrogate Circle Line. Beside the River Derwent, on the Scarborough Line, 
she comes off the curves near Kirkham Abbey as she approaches Malton. Departure from Scarborough, with its fine semaphore gantry, brought back the true Grizzly Pacific atmosphere. This departure is from York on an early evening clockwise trip around the circle. East Coast electrification is destined to completely change the appearance of York Station within a year. Mallard ran a number of other tours in 1987, but the principal reason for her restoration to running order was in readiness for 1988, the 50th anniversary of her world speed record. A carefully arranged series of tours was prepared for 1988, each of which was an instant sellout, necessitating duplicate runs and additional tours. Her first 1988 runs were not public ones, but some trips in May for the post office. For these, she ran to London light engine in order to work a post office special northwards. In her 50th anniversary year, she helped celebrate the 150th anniversary of the travelling post office. After running to Banbury on the Monday, she worked overnight to Manchester through the Hope Valley, running slowly to check clearances en route. The following day, she headed another TPO. The first Mallard 88 special was arranged for the 3rd of July, the exact anniversary of the 126 mile per hour record. As always, Mallard was prepared for these tours at York, which gives us an opportunity to look at her in some detail.
She was completed at Doncaster Works in March 1938 as works number 1870. She was the 28th member of Sir Nigel Gresley's famous A4 class of streamlined Pacifics for the London and North Eastern Railway and carried the number 4468. She started life with a non-corridor streamlined tender, which is how she is preserved today, although not with the original one. Her choice as the record breaker was not entirely by chance, as she was the first of the class to bear a double chimney, which appreciably increased her exhaust flow at speed. A major feature of this first weekend was the lineup of three A4s outside the NRM's engine shed on the 3rd of July. Mallard was joined by the 100th Gresley Pacific, named after the great designer himself, and by Bittem, here masquerading as the first A4 Silver Link. Bittem had not been restored to working order, so she was repainted into the original silver grey livery with single chimney to show how the pioneer streamliner looked in 1935. Our remaining sequences show 4468 on her hugely successful Mallard 88 tours, which covered four different routes from York during the summer. On the weekend following the actual anniversary, the tour ran to the Yorkshire coast. And here we see Mallard leaving York. After a brief stop at Malton, she continued eastwards to Scarborough, where she was turned for her trip along the coastline to Hull. Here she passes through the historic train shed at Filey. British Rail intended to demolish the poorly maintained overall roof. However, a preservation order has recently been issued, compelling BR to restore it.
Further south, she passes Howden on the Hull to Selby main line in true streamliner style. The following weekend, it was the turn of the Settle and Carlisle and Newcastle Carlisle routes. Here she leaves Skipton on the northbound run. The following day, Mallard crosses Arton Gill Viaduct between Bleemore and Dent on the Settle and Carlisle. As usual, a stop for water was made at Garsdale. On the Newcastle Carlisle line, she powers round the curve at Howe Mill, up a gradient of 1 in 107. In steam days, A4s did occasionally work over this. a series of wine and dine specials across the country to Grange over Sands. Nick Dodson of Rail Films obtained these superb aerial views as the train ran between Skipton and Carnforth.
the end of July, saw Mallard on a Trans Pennine working to Manchester. Here she is travelling southbound on the outward run. Approaching Sheffield from the north, 4468, having just passed beneath the M1 motorway, restarts from a signal check before making a water stop at Sheffield. A new station is proposed at this, the junction for the Barnsley and York line. Having left Sheffield, she ran via the Hope Valley and is seen here climbing to Eden. The return was over the Pennines via Diggle and Saddleworth. Below us is the former junction for the branch line to Delft. 